Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are going through 2022's external exams. We are looking at question five, which is a complex familiar question on networks. Let's get right into it. Question five was worth five marks. The map details the length in meters of pass between nine key locations in a theme park. The annual cost to maintain the pass is $214 per meter. The theme park manager believes it's at least $138,000 can be saved each year if some parts are removed while still allowing visitors to access every key location using paths. We need to evaluate the reasonableness of the manager's belief. Now there are two ways to approach this problem. The QCAA has used one method um, on their um, external exam solutions. You can go and have a look at that if you wish. I found a different way of looking at it and I think a lot of students would have gone about it the same way that I did. I could be wrong, but I will talk about their method as well. Either way, as long as you get to the solution and you show you're working and you're logical and communicating well, it doesn't matter how you get there. Okay, so firstly, we're going to start by finding the current length of all paths. And what I'm going to be doing is, as I add these up, because you can see there's a lot of numbers here, um, I could just punch it all into my calculator, but I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So I'm just going to put a little dash across the path once I've covered it off. So I'm going to start um, across the top. So I've crossed that one out, 120, 70 to the roller coaster, 50 down to the Ferris wheel, um, 110 to the stunt show, and so on, all the way across until I've crossed out all of the different options as I go through. As you can see, I'm making a little sum and showing the sum on my paper, all steps of working. Now, I wouldn't recommend crossing out the numbers with a big red pen on your actual paper because you won't be able to read the numbers afterwards. But um, some sort of way that you can indicate, even circling them, underlining that you've actually included all of them because you don't want to miss one. Once I've had that all up, I've got 1,325 meters of existing path. Now, what I could also do here is work out the cost, current cost, to maintain all of those paths. We know it's $214 a meter, so if I multiply that by 1,325, I'm going to get a cost of $283,550 to maintain my paths now. Now what I need to do is I need to work out this, um, if I change the paths around by cutting out some paths, well the way to do that is a minimum spanning tree. A minimum spanning tree is going to make sure every different location can be reached by reducing the number of paths that there are and not creating any loops. So we're going to use Kruskal's algorithm today. There's also a Prim's algorithm. I just prefer Kruskal's. It's a little bit neater. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you do it correctly. Okay, so what I do is I, with Kruskal's algorithm, I look for the path with the lowest value. So looking through the network, I can see that's the path between the Ferris wheel and the toilet. It's a path of 50. So I'm going to draw that path in first. Then I look for the path with the next highest value. And that is the path between the bumper cars and the car park. So that's 60. So I'm going to draw that one in. Then the next biggest path is 65. That's from the bumper cars to the eating area and also between the water slide and the laser show. So now I've got four paths drawn in. The next path that's biggest is the 70 up with the Ferris wheel to the roller coaster. Let's draw that one in. And my next biggest path is 95, connecting the toilet to the eating area. Um, I've almost connected all of my places. I've just got the stunt show left to make sure that it can be reached. Um, so if I look from 95, what's my next biggest number after 95? Well, it is 110. So I could draw that pathway in there. Now, I don't need to add any of the other paths. If I add any of the other paths across here, I'm going to create loops. So if I start, for example, from the Ferris wheel to the car park, and I draw that one in there, no good, it's going to make a loop. Same with this one here, it'll make a loop. This will make um, a loop as well. And, oh, but we've still got a way we need to get down to this water slide and the laser show. So we do have an extra step to do. So let's go with the next highest number from 110. So we've eliminated those loops. The next largest is 165, which is this one down the bottom. So what do you mean? Okay, so now I've actually reached every location and any other paths I color in are going to be creating loops. We don't want those. We've now spanned that entire network. We have a minimum spanning tree. So our next step is to work out the cost of this maintaining this minimum spanning tree. To do that, we need to find its length first. So I've got my original cost up the top, which I'm going to use as a comparison. And um, coming up with that spanning tree was worth a mark as well. So that's important to note. Now, um, finding that length, my new length is going to be the 110 
plus the 70, plus the 95, plus the 50, plus the 65, plus the 165 and the 65. And now I've spent my whole network and I've got a new length of 680 meters. So my new cost will be 680 times 214. And that gives me a new cost of $145,220. So I've got original cost and I've got new cost. Now I need to work out the difference in costs and see if that's at least $138,000. So if I do a subtraction and work that out, I'm gonna get $138,030. So the manager's correct because this number is at least 138. It's not much more, but it's $30 more. So what I'm gonna say, um, first of all, I get a mark there because I've actually got the difference in the costs. This evaluation part means writing a sentence or two. So first of all, I'm going to say the manager is correct and the belief is reasonable. So I've got to actually address, is it reasonable? Because $138,030 is greater than $138,000. So that amount, at least that amount will be saved. So comparing the two values, once again, we had another question where we had to evaluate before in a previous um, complex question. And you will remember that part of that was to compare the values. If I just say the manager is correct, the belief is reasonable, it's not good enough. I actually need to say that this one is bigger than this one and therefore I'm saving that money. Also, there was a final mark awarded in this question for that logical organization communicating those key steps. Not every question in the complex paper gets this communication mark, but this one's important because we need to actually show a like a step-by-step -step of how we got there. Now you remember at the very beginning of this video that I did say there was an alternative way of working this out. Let me just quickly give you a rundown on what that is. Instead of working out the original cost, I could have ignored that completely. I could have started straight with a spanning tree. I could have worked out that this is the correct path through the network. Then what I could have done is simply added the four paths together that are eliminated. This is actually a lot faster method, a much more efficient method than the method I've just taken you through, working out original cost, new cost, taking them away. I could have just worked out which paths got chopped out, multiplied the sum of those four paths by 214, and I would have come to this same place, this difference in cost. I would have got there a lot faster. Now, this didn't occur to me to do this method straight up. Maybe I'm not as bright as the QCAA, and I'm quite okay with that. But... This is quite valid as well to use my method if you take the long way. It will take you a little bit more time, but recognizing that a minimum spanning tree removes different pathways and gets you straight there to that answer would have saved you a bit of time. Now, so far you see that we've only got four marks that we've added up. And you might be wondering, where was that fifth mark? Well, with the QCAA solution, um, they actually just went straight to the savings. And we've talked about that. So correctly calculating the total length of the removed paths was that fifth mark. So if you didn't do the QCAA's method, you may not have been able to attract that fifth mark. On the other hand, however, I think that the QCAA are quite a um, benevolent and kind group of people. They really do want to see the best out of students. So I don't think they would have penalized students for choosing an alternative method as long as it was clearly um, located and very clearly set out and well organized. So if you had used my method, even though you technically didn't work out the lengths of the missing paths, you did work out the cost of the missing paths by calculating the difference. And I think the QCAA, I could be wrong, but I think they would have been okay with that because that's the thing about problem solving. There's not always one method to get you to a final answer. The important thing is how do you communicate it? Well, I hope you found this video helpful today. And if you did, why not connect with us a little bit further? You could like and subscribe to the channel, follow us on Facebook um, and Instagram. And you could also email me with any questions at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Love to hear from you and love to see your comments to know that the work I'm doing is benefiting you. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.